Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And today we are going to tackle a project that might apply to patients who cannot afford an indirect restoration like an onlay. And this is going to be a direct composite onlay, a procedure that you can perform in just one visit without the high expense of a laboratory or a milling machine. And I think that it's nice to be able to offer patients lower cost options, at least to get them through to a point where maybe they can afford perhaps a more permanent solution. This tooth has a fractured facial, it has mesial and distal caries, and an unknown amount of caries undermining that lingual cusp. We'll have to remove that amalgam and assess the situation. But it's nice to be able to consider a direct restoration that can be done with uh, composite resin and bonded to the enamel. And I think that this can provide the patient with a nice option that sometimes we consider unachievable. So before we start the restoration, let's think a little bit about why that facial cusp might have fractured. Is this parafunction? Was the patient uh, biting down on something hard? Is there something that we need to do functionally before we consider replacing this restoration. Look at this from the facial, you can see that there's a significant amount of cusp missing and we're gonna to wanna to build all that back up, but being mindful of the occlusal scheme and the guidance pathways. So after isolating with rubber dam, we go ahead and we start with the first part of the whole procedure, which would be the disassembly. So let's go ahead and start the disassembly with the 330 carbide. The burr is 1.5 millimeters in length, and we're going to want to use this burr to its full depth initially to remove this amalgam and make a little slit mesial distally across the tooth. Obviously, clinically, you'd be doing this with water. So in the next segment, let's go ahead and speed up the video so we can see how I continue expanding the outline form to remove the existing amalgam. I'm not going to go deeper pulpally at this point. I'm merely working on the peripheral areas. So I like to establish periphery with the high speed before we get into the deeper zones. And usually that is done with a slow speed. Now we can look in the mirror and see that there's still some amalgam and caries remaining underneath that lingual cusp and caries definitely present on the distal. We're going to make a slit out towards the distal and we can verify that there was indeed lots of decay there. And because on the radiograph we show caries on the mesial, we're going to make a slit towards the mesial as well. Let's take a look at that. Yep, there's the caries. Knowing that we have to drop a box, we're going to use the 245 carbide to establish our boxes. Now we don't always have to break contact with composites, but I'm going to do it here because on plenty of board examinations, interproximal contacts must be broken, particularly on the American boards. And just like we do with any class two, we work at it carefully and a little bit slowly until we achieve the broken contact on both the facial and lingual. The 245 burr is pretty small, so you don't have to worry about hitting the adjacent tooth too much. We'll go ahead and do that on the mesial as well. I like to seek the gingival clearance first and then move towards the facial and lingual. In this particular case, the lingual contact was broken very easily, and then the gingival, and then we're working on the facial. Now to break contact, it's a good idea to undermine the enamel with the 245 and then utilized hand instruments to chip away the enamel. Even though we're doing a composite and we don't want our internal line angles to be sharp, we can still use the chisel or hatchet in this case to chip away that loose enamel. always have the long end of the cutting blade 
towards the wall that you're removing. The bevel should be facing away from the wall that you're trying to extend and remove the enamel from. At this point, I think it's important to remember to refine those boxes as best as you can before you go into the carries removal in the deeper areas because we want to make sure that we've established a good outline form with good resistance and retention form before we move on to carries removal. I know it's tempting to go after all the carries first and sometimes that is uh, necessary but in this particular case getting that MOD preparation completed before we go after that cusp makes a lot of sense. So at this point Rather than removing the cusp, let's take a look at how undermined it really is, and we're going to use the slow speed round burr. You can see in the mirror just how undermined that cusp is. There's even some amalgam still left in there. So we're going to go after that area with the slow speed, undermining the enamel, and then going back and removing more enamel. Significant amount of undermined carious two structure has to be removed. And we want to get the DEJ absolutely clean. Sometimes you can't see it and it's important to expand the outline form from the occlusal, but other times you can look up underneath the cusp and you can see it pretty easily like in this particular case. But once all of that decay is removed from underneath that cusp, we now need to expand the outline and remove the cusp. So I'm going to go ahead and utilize the 245 carbide because it's longer than the 330 and those cusp walls are pretty tall. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we have a nice, clean, rounded internal form and that the DEJ is squeaky clean. Take a look at how we are going to remove the undermined enamel here. We're just going to extend the outline form wider and wider until we know that the enamel is resting on dentin. The outline form is going to get quite wide in this particular case and now we have to think of this more from a structural standpoint and think about what's going to keep that cusp from fracturing. And This is where we're going to remove those cusps. And for cusp removal today I'm going to use a 6835 diamond. This is a millimeter in diameter. It's a lot like a 57 carbide but a diamond version. This is part of Brassler's series on operative diamonds that can be utilized for cusp removals and for preparations of all different types. And the objective here is to keep removing the cusp until we have approximately two millimeters of occlusal space for the composite, but also making sure that all the enamel that's remaining is fully supported by good, strong dentin and make sure that you remove all remaining carries too at this point. And now with the basic preparation essentially completed, we're going to turn our attention towards the beveling. And we like to bevel because it will increase the surface area of retention, but also on the facial, it's going to make this preparation look more aesthetic.
So for the facial, we're going to bevel it in a similar manner, about a one millimeter wide bevel. And then we're going to modify that facial bevel into a starburst bevel so that it can blend in better from an aesthetic standpoint. It's good to spend some time rounding the transitions between the bevels and the remaining tooth structure and making sure we don't have any sharp edges on that outline form. So rolling the burr over the edges is pretty important, right like that. At this point, I think the preparation is ready for the adhesive procedures. We could place a little liner on that area on the mesial, but I think today we're just going to go ahead and restore it as it is. We have a starburst bevel on the facial, we have a heavy bevel on the lingual, and the rest of the preparation should be relatively smooth and ready for the next step. So thank you very much for spending a few minutes with me. In the next video of this series, we're going to show the composite buildup of this premolar. I'm looking forward to doing that with you. Take care.